At birth, Holly um, was oxygen deprived for 34 minutes. I had um, a uterine rupture, um, which was missed, and that was from a, pre a previous caesarean scar. I was told that I would have a caesarean um, if I wasn't favourable to induce. Um, I was told in the end that they would induce me, so I guess went along with, this, with the whole programme, assuming that what I was told, I was in good, good safe hands. Went through the process of labour, um, was fully dilated and was left in a room with my husband. Um, and then my stomach, this really sort of strange movement, which I need to describe it like a, I don't know, like a snail, sort of like moved quite a lot. Um, at which point the monitor on Holly crashed um, completely and didn't seem right. So my husband ran off to go and um, try and find someone to help. So at that point already, we knew that something wasn't quite right. Um, and then of course I came round and my husband had to give me the news that, you know, a little girl had been born, but she wasn't very well. Probably actually worse for him because I was, wasn't very with it and he had to sort of see the whole thing. Almost like PTSD, I think, to try and deal with it. So I was probably quite oblivious to it all. Holly, we knew had athetoid cerebral palsy, so due to sudden loss of oxygen, um, it was sort of deemed that she would have pretty good intelligence, um, albeit physically very disabled. People even ask me now, actually, are you angry? Um, and I guess um, you can always, I think on a bad day, when you've had a particularly tough day, you'd say, oh God, actually, this is really hard work. Um, but, um, and for a little while afterwards, I wanted another child to replace her because I felt that I hadn't, you know, got what I ordered. Um, and um, so, yeah, lots of anger, really. Um, and then probably frustration with myself because um, I then felt maybe I should have said to them, no, I need a cesarean. Um, but I went with the process because I thought they knew better than me. Um, and I thought if I had a cesarean straight away, it wouldn't have happened. So probably anger, anger at the hospital, anger at myself um, and wishing I could turn the clock back. She, when she was in hospital for uh, four or five weeks, it came out just before Christmas, which has got to be the worst Christmas we ever had. Um, she didn't feed very well. It was when probably I started to get quite down and then realising actually, you know, this is not great. And at that point, it really probably hit me. And then I think it was just the thought of the future, what the future could be. Um, and at that point, it wasn't looking very good. Day to life, uh, yeah, I guess you just adjust. Um, had I envisioned her at nearly you know, 17, needing quite so much help, probably not. Did I ever think she wouldn't walk? I don't know, I think you have this sort of image of they'll get better, I know, quite naive, or hope maybe. Um, but then I look at her um, on another side, so physically she is incredibly disabled, but absolute huge pride and admiration because um, She's feisty, she's very tenacious. Um, I mean, she's a girl, but she's very, very strong-willed, which I think she's needed to be. Um, but the fact that she's done GCSE, she's now starting her international baccalaureate, she has a vision to go to university. Um, Holly is pretty much a model student. You'd kind of describe her as the perfect student to have in your classes, because she's very, very curious, um, very hardworking. She's really good at kind of taking in everything around her. Um, and asking questions as well. She likes to have a bit of a joke with the teachers. She's got a very good sense of humour. She's very, very quick. You can't really get anything past her. I acted with Jessica Hines and David Tennant. It was an amazing experience. I also spent time in her and makeup. My screen mum was called Fiona. She was quite fat. She is a bright girl. I mean, she amazes me with some of the stuff that she says via communication. Her level, her command of English language is amazing. She uses far better words than I use. Yes, psychology, philosophy, psychology, anything else, tea. The assumption was that she was just mentally disabled. And if we hadn't have had the AAC support, which to be fair, we got that route in through uh, Jill and through Sue Smith, Holly probably would be having a very different story now. I first met Holly at school actually. I had just started working in clinical negligence and was assisting Richard Follis, the partner who was leading on Holly's case. It was becoming clear that her intellect was preserved and that she would um, be capable of going on to um, different educational opportunities in the future. 
and we weren't sure what those would be and it's important that her compensation allowed for whatever the outcome was going to be for her and her education. Seuss has made it really clear that Holly needed specialist AAC support to help manage the process for her in school because it wasn't going to work otherwise. There wasn't any AAC expertise in Cambridgeshire and in a nice way now actually Holly has a legacy because because of the network that Holly was able to set up through having support from Shoesmiths and the educational team other children are now joining Holly's school because there is a centre of excellence almost set up and if it wasn't for that again starting point Holly wouldn't be where she is now and wouldn't have been as educated as she is now so uh, it will make a massive difference for her whole future thank goodness.